Let, let me let me pause for a minute here because I think there's two elements in terms of the audience that 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 we're reaching. There's so I think that that's an excellent primer um, to mm -hmm. or you know primer as the British would say in terms of where we are today. But but you know people who've been in the space we're all too yeah. aware of the fact that we've also come through what some would term a crash. You know we've certainly mm -hmm. seen you know, a lot of issues with crypto, you know, some degree of, of skepticism with some elements of blockchain. So how does that factor into it? Of course, there was a crash between, you know, web 1.0 and 2.0, but um, all of the technology you're talking about thus far has also been a bit fraught and has certainly come under the radar of the SEC in terms of, at least in terms of the, you know, the payment parts of, the, of this, new revolution the regulators are taking notice so g give us some sense of what's what's happening there for those who who know what it is and who are really wondering how all these other factors are starting to shape it what would you say yes In 30 well, seconds or less i'm just kidding Good. well technology is cyclical technology is cyclical um that's been true for forever. And even as um, as late as last year, the expectation was we were nearing the end of a, um, a cycle of technology, innovation and investment because of rising interest rates. And right. Web3 was caught up in that uh, for a time. And a lot of detractors pointed to the collapse of FTX, for example, as right. evidence that this technology, while useful in the hands of governments and central banks and maybe some big companies, was a net negative when um, left to the free market. It created new ways for speculators to gamble and it created new ways for criminals to evade law enforcement. In actuality, we can blame the collapse of companies like FTX, um, not on the technology itself, but on the hubris mm -hmm. of those who were building it. And that's been true of technology, honestly, throughout history. Sure. I mean, the, old, the oldest technology like fire can be used to cook food and heat your home um, but it can also be used to, you know, burn down a city. Um, mm -hmm. And that's true for every technology, really. I mean, the Internet uh, in its early days, people said was simply a tool for criminals and pornographers um, because they were users of the technology, just as bad people use fire, drive cars um, and use this technology, too. Um, but, you know, the collapse of any single company in the space um, should, doesn't typically uh, mean it's the end of, of the industry, you know? The age of exploration did not end with the first failed voyage. Yeah. Um, the, the Industrial Revolution didn't end with the many panics that happened in the 19th century where banks and railroads went under. And we didn't call it quits on the internet in 2001 after the crash. Yeah. So it's often actually after these periods where um, the tide comes out and um, interest dips where a lot of the big innovation happens um, throughout history and i think that's going to be true here as well so where you know you sound you're an optimist and i understand why because you're talking about fundamental technology shifts um it's interesting when i talk to leaders the conversation has shifted from blockchain and and crypto it's still there of course and you know there's no question it's going to transform processes to to, to this whole generative AI, how does that factor into this revolution or is it really, um, you know, noise at this point to what you're talking about? Well, I think the two are centrally uh, and inexorably linked, actually. Um, okay. Right now, we're on, this, we're on the brink of this really interesting age um, where technology is reimagining basically everything that's possible. Mm -hmm. And throughout history, technologies have come along, which have transformed the economy and culture in some really crazy ways. And we've seen that recently with the internet, but before that, you know, computing and the radio and the steam engine and so on and so forth. And now we're at this really interesting stage where there's not one, but several new technologies all kind of emerging at once. So generative AI and large language models like, um, like ChatGPT are not just you know doing raw computation they're writing poetry and music and creating art they are enhancing human um, capability in, in new and maybe scary ways uh, you're seeing the rise of you know the internet of things of billions or trillions of connected devices forming the infrastructure for our connected world you're seeing the rise of virtual reality and augmented reality you know apple just released its vision pro 
And it's possible that- What do you think you know, of that, by the way? Do you think it's going to go well, away think, the Google Glass? I mean, it's not the most attractive No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. You know, I mean, virtual reality, what's really interesting about all these technologies that I'm describing is that, is that they're all overnight success stories, 50 years in the making. You know? Right. I mean, As is true AI, for a lot of things, right? That is true, right? So the AI scares, you know, we've had AI scares dating back to the 1960s uh, and 1970s. I mean, Alan Turing, the inventor of the computer, actually raised concerns about um, you know, the singularity before that was the term we used to describe when, when computers exceed human intelligence. Um, and when it comes to virtual reality and augmented reality, I mean, there have been versions of that for four, 30 or 40 years. But they say there's nothing as powerful as, as an idea whose time has come again. <laughs> uh, 